negative energies can enter into, don't you know it can dwell in your body? So your body too needs to be sanctified by that river of God that washes from your soul. If not, you will find your body contradicting your spirit. This is why meditation and contemplation is very important. So when I sit down, I sit down in my room. I'm in my room like this. I'm sitting on the chair. And then I begin to sense that, you know, if you are sensitive, you can actually sense the energy of anger. You can feel it here. You can feel when it tries to rise. You can sense jealousy. If you are sensitive, it will come. Bam! Here. You can sense. In fact, you can sense evil when it wants to happen. You will sense it here. I'm talking about eternal interactions here. So you sit down. And then first of all, you lift your soul away from worry. How do you lift your soul from worry? You quiet your soul. Your soul is logical. You tell your soul reasons to trust you, to trust the invincible, the immortal within you. Your soul is logical. It thinks a lot. It tries to calculate. So you have to steal your soul. It's not like, I won't worry. No, no, you steal your soul. David knew how to do this. He said, my soul, why are you downcast? A lot of times, how do I lift myself away from worry? I recount where God brought me from. The things I shouldn't have survived and I survived. When I begin to recount on the mercies and the goodness of the Lord towards me, it brings my river to a calm. Now I've mastered it. I can move my spirit away from worry immediately. I've done it over, over time. When you do that, you now isolate the negative energy within you. You can pinpoint it. The Bible says, casting down every high thing that what seeks to exalt. When those things come into you, they try to run upon your mind and take the seat. So you identify. It can be so much so that if you are doing this, sometimes you can feel it moving in your body. And then you are telling that demon that is trying to get a place in your life. That energy. You are telling that energy that you have no place in my body. You may not be saying anything, but your whole creation is speaking. Don't you know, even though someone doesn't like you and he doesn't say it, he can release an energy that will make you who is sensitive know that this smile is fake, this person doesn't like me. Sensitive people, if you are gossiped in a place, you can actually interact with the energy there. Yes, if you experience that, you are, you are very alive. You are sensitive. So, you can speak without speaking. You are expelling it. If you have eyes, you begin to see images of either a river breaking forth or a light breaking forth. As you're expelling it, sometimes if it's a lustful energy, immediately there you feel aroused. It's trying to fight. So it's trying to manifest. If demons are expelled, guess what? They will try to react. Now, the demons that are sub to is the one that should be feared. Peter was talking, he didn't know Satan had possessed him. Yeshua looked at him and said, Be gone from me, Satan. Away from me. Get behind me. Yeah, this was Peter speaking. So there are sub to energy. A sister can come and hug you and he has de she has deposited lust in you, even unknown to her. So you isolate it. And then you move it down to your feet. See, so these are the things I should be teaching to prophet. Guess what? Look how you stay. How do you expel negative energy? Remember, I told you that the rivers of God is for refreshing. In every Christian is the river of God in your belly. That river can rise. You can stir it up to rise. You can sense it. It's there. It's inside here. So guess what? You begin to expand the river. In your mind, you, you watch it go to your heart. You watch it cleanse your heart. And then guess what? In your heart, you begin to come into harmony. You begin to come into acceptance. I'm not worried about what's happening to me. Oh, I'm bigger than my troubles. It's before you know, your mind begins to come to stillness by, by resolving the conflict it had by itself. When the river is done, it will move through your chest. Move into your mind. Move to your body, your genitals, your auntie. That energy exits your leg. I tell you, you will do this thing for five or six minutes. You can sense it. And then you stir it up from your belly. When you are done and you stand up from there, you will feel light. How many of you know this thing even before I tell you exactly? You see? It's a way to reboot yourself and just become... See, you will come out and you are just happy all of a sudden. Because you've dealt with a power that wanted to gain ground in your heart. The day you fell was not the day the power entered you. The lost was at work. It was at, it's, it's a power of death. And the Bible said this power of death have access to your members. You have to quiet it down. Now how do we meditate? Christians, the Bible said this book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night. Before you do meditation, you must have an object of meditation. Meanwhile, there's no spiritual meditation without spiritual connection. You meditate by connection to a higher spirit. We will have the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of the highest. So our meditation is facilitated by what? The highest spirit. And our talking of meditation is the words of the highest spirit. Are we together? The word of God. That's what we meditate for. Now, when I sit down in my room, you cannot meditate without coming to stillness. It's another skill I will teach you. How to be still. How to silence your whole world. Do you know what social media is doing to you? It's making your mind impatient. As you are scrolling, before long, you notice that you can no longer sit down and read something from beginning to end. Yes, that's what social media does to you. So, 
as you are meditating on the word of God, you put it here, you put it before you, you set it in your spirit, and then you allow your spirit to contemplate it, you saying it out. That's when you are chanting it out to affect your environment. But inwardly, you are, you are putting it before yourself. And the way I come to spiritual stillness is to ask the greater one questions. You want to learn like me in the spirit, learn to ask questions to the spirit of God. You ask questions in the place of meditation. Why is the world round? How come earth is floating? Now, because you have connection to an eternal spirit, there is something that I don't know how God has programmed the spirit within us. He wants to bring you into knowledge. A lot of times, most of my most powerful revelations come when I'm receiving water being poured on me. I'm in the shower and water is being poured on me. This was why you discovered that prophets of old, they like to stay around riverine areas or in the desert places. Desert places elevate your spiritual consciousness. Why? Because it starves your body. And number two, because it takes away from human destruction. Riverine places connects you to the flow of nature. After you be receive Yeshua and you become a son of God, you don't become a religious man. You become a what? Spiritual man. One connected to the light of God. Where you find religion is worship and faith. Where you find spirituality is life. So you hear John when he was at the house of Patmos. They thought they were imprisoning him. They don't know they are taking him to his natural habitat. Do you know that the emissions of all these microphones and all this TV, do you know that there are emissions? Have you ever been singing a spiritual song and joining it? The moment you take it to a studio, the power in the song drop. Yes. Spiritual things are most potent when it is natural. Uh, only spiritual people understand what I'm saying. You are singing a song now. Immediately you put a camera before you. The power will just drop. You understand? That's why there's no CCTV camera in a shrine. We don't know that as the sons of God, what God will give you in order to train you are the elements of this world. If you cannot manage this world, you will not qualify to manage celestial responsibilities. He called it true riches. You left your rivers. Habalists took over our rivers and the deep priesthood for a hundred years until that river was brought under bondage to darkness. Your mango tree became a, a meeting center for which is because you left it open. The whole element can carry the glory of your God. Have you commanded your chairs to serve God? Have you commanded the stone not to hurt any righteous one? Have you commanded your door to expel anyone that comes with evil intent? Even the gate, when an angel came, the gate opened of his own accord. He was telling you that the gate had consciousness to recognize a superior being. You only command your business. Hello, Mr. Makato. Even the business is not listening to you. So meditate on the word of God. Meditate on the light of his grace. And cast your heart upon the wonders of heaven.